Hi, I'm Jason. I'm with Father and Son Gaming, and today I'm going to uh, show you how to put together your Stalingrad um, grain elevator. So I've laid out these um, piles right here. When it ships to you, these will be bundled in tape individually, and each one of these is basically a box. And so you'll put that together. Um, also included in your kit will be um, eight magnets, eight little disc magnets. Um, to put it together, you're gonna need some sort of glue. I use tight bond wood glue, but you know, simple school, school glue will work fine. I would avoid Gorilla glue because it foams and we don't wanna see any of that. I have a cheap throwaway craft brush and just a piece of cardboard to put um, the glue on. Now, the elevator does not come with two inch PVC pipe. You're gonna need an eight foot stick of this because you will need eight um, lengths that are 11 and three quarter inches long. Um, it can take a lot of paint to get this to, to um, a lot of times it'll have writing on it. To cover that up can be a little bit hard. I use gray primer, then I hit, well, the whole thing here actually with some textured paint. Um, to give it a concrete-like appearance. Now, you'll need um, one piece that uh, is nine inches long, and that's to go in the front, okay? Um, I, had, I only put a few out, but it's one of the things I did to mine was try to put some battle damage on them. And if you get the camera close to that, I just took a drill and hit it with a couple um, starter holes there. And on this one here, I hit it with like a, a saw until it got a bigger crack in it and then drilled a hole through that. So, you know, you can do that as much as you want if you want to put some battle damage on those. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people do that to MDF too. I personally am not that great at it, but people will kind of hit it with a screwdriver and scratch it up and it can give it kind of a, a nice appearance, but I haven't mastered that yet, so I'm not going to try it. One other thing you might need during assembly is a small hammer. I use this little tack hammer that belonged to my grandfather. It's probably 100 years old. So let's get ready to go. All right, I'm going to start with probably the hardest section, and that's the larger back tower. Um, the one thing you want to make sure of on this is that you don't get these reversed. So when you put it together, you'll see some slots you'll see some holes on the side. These holes right here need to line up with these holes that go across here. These holes also need to line up with this slot. So it will go together like this, but you can see the slot doesn't really line up with the hole, so that's wrong. So make sure you're using that as your guide to sort of get these put together right, because all these holes should line up. When I do my cuts, I tend to make these joints pretty tight and sometimes they won't even really um, need glue. So put this center piece in with these little joints going into the holes. And I'm just gonna line that up and kind of use this side of my hammer to get those started. And like I said, these can be really tight. This is one of the hardest ones to put together. Um, I would just caution you, do not hit it up here. It'll break it. And it is kind of weak right here. So be very careful there. So let me see if I can get that started again. This is the trickiest one. But most of you out there are hobbyists used to putting stuff like this together. And so it's starting to go together really well. It's kind of get them started and then kind of keep going back and forth. Once they get started, they usually go right in. And they've got, if you can get closer, there's a nice tight joint there. And so that's what you're really looking for. Stop. All right, the next two pieces to go in will be these slotted pieces with holes for changing floors. So you're gonna wanna mate these down through here. I'm just gonna get those started for you. And that's a really tight fit, again, 
and then we'll pound those in just like we did before. See those joints tightening up. Be careful pounding over any kind of opening like that. Sometimes it's unavoidable. A thick one like this, you can get away with it. And this right here should become flush. So now you've got your different floors of the granary tower together. Don't put any bind on this while you're putting it together. Two. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the sides on. I just kind of dry fit them here to make sure this is all going to go together. So we'll put these on one at a time. I like to turn the model on its side and basically line up the joints again. And this time everything's going to be going down. I'll uh, start over here on the edge. And again, I haven't had any, any glue yet. I kind of like to get them all started and then go back and do them again. So. Now, we've got this sort of 90 degree corner done, but we still need to get these holes lined up with the, the floors of, of the model. So just really check that that is lined up. And you can see that's going together. You might have to play with this a little bit to get it lined up, but you'll feel it click in. And start gently and then you can be a little more aggressive. So there's one side. Let's do the other side. If your teeth are wrong, you'll see a little overhang right here. That's You can tell that's wrong. Plus these holes don't line up. So we're going to flip that and go ahead and put it in the exact same way. Next thing, all you have to do is line up the, the end and the bottom, or the, I should say the top and the bottom. So if you can see here, I've got all three of these openings for, for stairs, if you would want to sort of build your own uh, stairs for this. So it's really the same technique as the sides. We'll just kind of tap this on. As this starts to get built, it gets a lot stronger and you don't have to be as, as careful. See, I'm just starting these, and then I'll come back and give them a, a nice hit at the end ones. Sometimes you gotta sort of push it and squeeze it a little bit to make it behave the way you want it to. There it goes, and it'll, it'll hold together real nice. Um, we're gonna do these ones in the middle now, and again, you might have to flex that back and forth to get it in. I just kinda eyeball it on top. This one's being a little stubborn. There it goes. All right, go ahead and stop. All right, this is the bottom and it does have a hole in it. I did that for a reason. There are a lot of Stalingrad tables that have underground sewers and things like that. So I wanted to give you the opportunity if you wanted to, to have an entrance to the underground inside of there. So we'll go ahead and attach this one the same way. All right, you're gonna have these four little sticks in here. Don't throw these away, these are actually important parts. Um, on the back side of the wall that goes on here, you can see it has a lot of windows and a door. The doorway will go at the bottom. I'm just gonna put a really light coating of this wood glue on here. The joints here are gonna be tight, but uh, it's the only joint, so we wanna Give these a little strength and it it might there it goes so these will um keep this back wall on here if you're um you know not putting troops inside of there if you don't need access this will um hold the uh back wall on. all right we're going to go ahead and put together the base um when you put the base together um, start um, with this door here facing um, the left hand side and that will mate up with this door over here while we I'm just letting that set while the glue dries 
Um, again, these joints are fairly tight, but they're not as tight as they were on the original tower. So I'm gonna just take my brush and put a little bit of glue on these joints. It doesn't take very much at all. Um, and we'll get this going together. This goes together pretty easily. Um, other than that, um, there's a few other steps you'll need to pay attention to, but we'll put these on here. Then we'll get started on the uh, sides. I like the uh, doors for this to be down on the end since you've got a lot of, um, and this is kind of tricky. You might want to use a clamp or a strap or something to go around. But you, you, this is, these, these joints definitely need glue, just where I'm going with this. So I'll go ahead and get this put together. You can kind of see there's uh, windows on the end, and there's another one on the side and the top. Um, when you do the top, this end right here um, goes opposite of this door over here. I'll show you a video of it once I get it glued up, but this, this will go together pretty fast. A lot of MDF models, the lid can come in and out, but with this model, it's gonna be, uh, this base piece right here is really important to hold the whole thing together. So just make sure this little door back here is on the same side as these uh, uh, openings for the pipe, and this should be on the opposite side of this right here. Um, it really doesn't matter if you put this in either way, but um, we'll go ahead and get that glued up and come back to you. All right, we've got all these joints with just a little dot of glue on them. We're gonna go ahead and put this uh, roof on here. Just make sure everything gets all lined up and it should pop right in. And it um, doesn't take much glue, especially if you use a good wood glue. But again, just regular old Elmer school glue will work fine. Um, once all these joints are in here, I like to take a paper towel and just wipe up any glue. That also pushes it down into the cracks. And let that set up. And this piece doesn't come apart. Um, Next, we'll go ahead and talk about the magnets and how to put these uh, roofs on. All right, so you'll notice this hole is a little offset. The hole should be inboard, so, so we want the um, hole to sort of be uh, toward the center of the model. Make sure you test fit this because um, these, um, if you put them on backwards, um, there'll be a little bit of an overhang, but if you line up the holes just right, everything down here on the end will be squared up um, and you should get a pretty nice appearance. Um, you can, the nice thing about these is you can easily paint these a different color. When you put the magnets in, you just gotta watch your north and south. So I kind of uh, glue these in in pairs and I'll take like a pen and make a, a mark on my magnets that way I don't have them backwards. So just glue them in, in pairs. I wouldn't let the glue dry with this sitting together because you don't want uh, glue to get between your magnets and make that hard to take off. But once you get this together, which I'll show you later, you can easily take this off so you can put models in and out um, of the granary um, without having to take the whole thing apart. And this will be all filled with pipes anyway, so there's no way to get models in, in the center of this. So let me get those magnets glued and we'll show you what that looks like. So we'll put uh, some glue in the hole and uh, these magnets need to be flush with the surface. So there you go. And we'll let that dry because we don't want the other magnet to pull it out. I'll go ahead and work on these ones. I'm going to set these roof pieces with their four magnets aside while these magnets dry because if we start putting magnets on here, we'll 
we'll pull them out of the glue and we don't want to do that. These are these holes right here are fit pretty tight for the magnets. If they don't want to stay in there, you might have to use a, a super glue or something like that. Um, you could also turn it upside down and let them sit on the table and put them in right here and reach in this hole right here. And that'll keep them from falling into the hole. So our base of our granary is done. This is where our eight pipes will go into. We'll come back to that later. All right, this will be the upper deck that goes um, on the other side of the uh, pipes. So when I get this little box put together, it'll set up here. So this is a really, this, there's a lot of glue joints on here. You don't have to get glue on every one of them. But again, this is just a little box with six pieces. Um, get that glued up, set it aside, and we'll do the next one. All right, this, the inside of this is not going to be visible at all. So you can kind of cheat a little bit and really kind of speed up the glue by just getting it down in that crack with your brush. And again, this is not going to be visible at all. So I know some of you are more meticulous than I am. If you want to put glue on every one of those joints, that's fine. But it doesn't take very much of this glue once it sets up to hold this. So I just kind of cheat a little bit, making sure I kind of get the corners here. That way the corner joints are strong. So that'll speed up your assembly if you want to do that you definitely don't have to but because you can't see the inside of there i tend to be a little more sloppy so again some of these joints are pretty tight and you may have to use a small hammer to get those in um, sometimes the top one will go in a little too far so i'm just prying that back out just using my fingernail once they get started, they usually they usually start going in. So just a few spots to be a little stiff every once in a while. It is wood. It does breathe and move. So there we go. Now it's all... After I get these together, I like to kind of go around and do it again just to get it... Um, make sure things lined up nice. Sometimes I'll turn it on end and get those joints all squared up. And it doesn't take, when these joints are this tight, it doesn't take hardly any glue at all. So you have just a little bit of glue squeezing out there. This one's a little loose. Sometimes that might happen. Oh no, it's fine. Um, but if it does happen, just add a little extra glue, which I, you know what I'm going to before the glue sets. So I'll just touch this one up. And like I said, it's wood. So it's not super, super perfect. We try to get it as close as we can. But uh, you can see I'm barely putting any glue on at all. All right, we'll get this hammered in there and we should be good to go. All right, this is the section that goes on top of this deck we just uh, built. Uh, it's one of the thinnest pieces. So this is just a space that uh, is... Um, it's, this is another easy box to put together. You can see I'm gluing it again. Just a little dab of glue for each one of these little um, joints here. And um, this should go, to, now that you're this far in, this should, you should be getting pretty good at this. And it should go together pretty quick for you. So I'll come back to you once I get this assembled. Um, there is a door on one end. doesn't really matter which end you put it on because it'll flip over. And I'll show you how that lines up later. All right, I just put four pipes in. You're going to have eight total in the holes, and then one of them will go in the front. Now, take a look at this. This notch right here goes toward what I'm calling the front of the granary. That's so your shorter pipe can
can fit in here with the others and go in that hole right here. Now I will warn you, once you get eight pipes in here, it can be a little tricky to get all this lined up. Um, let me go ahead and do that and we'll come back to you. All right, we've got that lined up. So this pipe right here actually does go into that slot. So what, what you're gonna do next is take this upper deck piece here. Remember, we don't glue the roof to that. You kind of set it on here with these doors flush to flush and center to the back. Now you'll take your tower and those doors line up right here and you can say that troops can go through those. So we've got an opening to move through the structure for gameplay. Just to show you now that these little braces are on here, this will set right in here and hold that on during gameplay. So I did cut a, um, you know, everybody likes to get up on the roof and some players will say, well, you can't get up there unless there's an opening. So for game purposes, there is an opening and this lid will set right in here. My glue is not 100% dry, so I'm not gonna force that yet, but I like to leave this, on, leave this unglued. You can also stick your finger in here to take it off and on. And the last piece is just this little, final structure that sits on top up here. So we'll come back, we'll put this together just like everything else and come back to you. Um, and again, I will leave the top roof off of this so that you can open, you can get inside of it to put troops in. The nice thing is during gameplay, you can always pick this up, put your troops in and set it back down. So we're almost done here. All right, we've got the uh, grain elevator completely assembled. Let me just go over a couple things with you. Of course, you're gonna need eight feet of pipe plus one more for this, uh, one more foot. It's actually nine inches or so. Let me just double check that while I got you on here. Uh, you're gonna need uh, nine and a quarter inches for that front pipe. Everything else is 11 and three quarter. Um, so a couple things during gameplay, you definitely remove these uh, these little side panel roofs to reach in here and get uh, figures in and out um, all the way around the perimeter. Um, we left this unglued so we can take this off for gameplay. Um, it does have a little bit of a tight fit, but it does come off. I'm sure if you're going in and out of it every turn, you might just place it on there. And of course, if you want to come out and get a sniper up on the roof, you can too. Um, I really don't know if that'd give you any advantage because you've got these windows here for cover, but you might be using this for a different game than bolt action. Um, this little sort of bunker that goes on top, don't glue this on. You can put men in there and there's an opening on top if you feel like uh, coming out of the top there. Um, our backside here, remember this comes right off and you can kind of see we have openings to go from floor to floor, an opening to go into any underground complex. And if you look really close in here, once you move the camera in, you have a doorway that goes from the tower section into this lower area here. So you're able to move troops in and out of this thing fairly um, easily. Now, I did build this to specifications of the Stalingrad campaign book and it says it should have these areas we're talking about. It wanted in um, some areas over here and the top and bottom. This is more for looks, but if you want to throw it into your game, that's fine. It has five distinct areas for that scenario. So it is complete. Listen, if you run into, and I, I'm a one man business with my son who's 12 helping me out. We want you to have a lot of fun with the products we make. If you have any trouble, if you break something putting it together, please just reach out and I will send you a new part. So if you're stuck, if you have, have a mistake, I can send you a new part for no problem. Um, so I hope you have a lot of fun with this. We'd love to see pictures of your uh, painted uh, Stalingrad grain elevator once you get that done. Um, and 
keep watching our website for other products like this. I tend to be um, in love with big, iconic models like this, so we'll see what we can come up with um, in our next design. And thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us.